All right, there's many scriptures written about um, Islam and the last days and the end times. Just going to look at the relationship between the Quran and the Bible and what it says in Revelation and what it says in the Quran. Um, so you can dispute those. I'm not saying this is exclusive to all Muslims because um, we all have a choice to what we're going to follow. But the pattern is at the moment um, is the communists and the Muslims seem to be kind of working together. Not not in a visible way at the moment, but uh, certainly we see here the relationship between Greek and Arabic. This is the Arabic name in the name of Allah, right here. And this is the Greek for 666, as written in the book of Revelation. So, just some points, brief points about the end times from the Quran, about the signs of the end times. Um, well, Jesus certainly prophesied about earthquakes. Arguably, Muhammad gave quite a lot of prophecy from what Jesus already said in Matthew 24. Um, really, it just seems to be that if you still want to be a sovereign nation, you got to reject Islam because, as I say, Islam is working with the communists, with the globalists. Seems to be their chosen way of bringing about uh, globalism through Islam. And then they also want to destroy Christianity and Islam to bring in their one world religion. Now, of course, the Quran won't tell Muslims that. It'll only tell them so much. But yes, this is what the Bible speaks about. I'll, I'll briefly talk talk to you about what the Bible speaks about the end times. Just compare it roughly to what you know these prophecies in the Quran is talking about. It's love, fornication, and all stuff. Sex outside of marriage. So in Islam, you can take wives and concubines lawfully, um, which is biblical, which they get from, in fact, the Torah. Now there's much about these prophecies here, but they relate to the book of Daniel. The seven mountains, there are seven mountains in Rome. Seven hills in Edinburgh, there are seven mountains in Jerusalem. And there are seven continents, etc. All sort of ties in. And there are seven kings, five are fallen. One is and the other is yet to come. And when he comes, he must continue a short space. So you could uh, say that this represents empires from Babylon, Medo-Persia, Grecia, Rome, and then the 6th century uh, Islam came in and really dominated things right up until about uh, the First World War, where you get the final beast. And the beast that was and is not is even as the eighth and as of the seven goes into perdition and so a lot of people talk about the Catholic Church and all different religions but what you got is the the satanic trinity of the beast the false prophet and the dragon and certainly the the religion of the dragon is, is very much the the Catholic Church and the Catholic Church had a very strong hand in the creation of Islam because Muhammad's first wife was a Roman Catholic and she was a very rich woman and she was able to supply many scribes. A lot of these scribes were Roman Catholic priests. The equivalent of the Jesuits that we have today. And so this uh, final eighth empire, you know, so if seven kings are empires and the eighth one is just forming just now in the Middle East, um, generally what it's saying is it's forming a new one world government and religion. So just going to look at a few websites and commentaries. The first one here, Christian sermons and music videos. 
where you're getting a rundown about the Ottoman Empire. I used to have these on my own website, a lot of the information before it got taken down. But uh, you can see some of the information in here. Scan through it. You know, giving you explanations as to what they thought maybe John saw. You know, gunpowder being uh, used. And this is the from the Muslim horses. But I believe it's going to happen in a, an end time scenario. I believe they were the seventh um, empire through Muhammad, which uh, really took rule in the Middle East. But their time has ended, and they just got to complete the prophecies which are written in the Quran that they are head or whichever god Muhammad worshipped um, which is a lot of information about Alat and Allah being a uh, male female goddess and there are three goddesses which of course Muhammad was meant to ven venerate very much which Salman Rushdie really touched on quite a lot So here from Revelation 9, it's telling us about the rise of Islam and their power within the Middle East. And then Abu Bakr, who did a lot of um, wars even into Europe, which we see now. They've, they've very much came in peaceably into Europe and are really seeking to unite the world under Islam which I don't I don't believe is going to happen but again they're just being used by Satan to bring about a lot of destruction of course we've got the 9-11 scripture from Revelation which uh, which I believe really talks about the event of 9-11 as well really ties into that so you can see a lot of similarities and uh, And we go right down here and we study the language or the, the Hebrew language for locusts we can see a similarity we can see it from this website the Hebrew word for locust Arab the Hebrew word for Arab basically almost the same pronunciation except of course Revelation is written in Greek but you know you can see still the uh, the ties between the final Empire coming through um, the, the the Jewish state at the moment, and the one that's being conquered at the moment, it seems, um, in that area. But uh, as this is what the Third World War is all about. And just like locusts, they're coming into Europe and eating all the food, you know, all, all the refugees from these nations. I think 90 odd percent of them are Arabs. So, um, why that is, and they're also Muslim. So, why that they have to be such a high number of Muslims there, I'm not really sure. But again, uh, this is the first time that. Islam came to prominence and this was the period that they took them to really conquer the Middle East and try to conquer Europe as well which they are really gaining a foothold now of course in London and many different cities in Europe um, again the reasons for that many different reasons because of course the Christians are not standing up against the gay marriage and that's that's one reason because Islam is very much um, about heterosexual marriages even though there's problems within their culture you know we see them uh, doing bakabazi which you can study what that is but there's all these subcultures within the nations so generally Islam is doing the right thing by standing against gay marriage you can see what would happen 
if the government passed a law to have gay marriages in mosques. You know, that's if you really want to start World War Three. You know, if it's not already started, of course it is. But you know, it's uh, very provoking to anyone who's stand, trying to stand by biblical morals, uh, which of course the Quran's taken a lot of biblical themes out out of um, the Torah of the New Testament and also talks about that some of these early warriors, Islamic warriors, had long hair and turbans which uh, ties into a lot of the prophecies in Revelation 9 which is listed here, Revelation 9, 7 and 8 uh, let's have a look at this website It's talking about Saudi Arabia here being the the pit, but you know, this is really talking about hell. These are demons from the pit of hell, and of course, a lot of us who are studying CERN know that that's probably opening portals, and you're getting all kind of demonic hosts coming through. It's very much a demonic army. You're getting, you know, the last world ruling empire very much into transhumanism into changing the DNA of human beings which uh, the Nephilim obviously have already done they did extensively during the days of Noah and a lot of Christians say well we won't see that we'll be raptured well the Bible does teach that the last days shall be like the days of Noah and then the star falling here is giving the Greek words and relating this to I think Muhammad used to be spelled this way, but it's there, there's an A in there prominently now. Maybe it's another Mandela effect. But uh, there we have it, and then we see the locusts, and then we see the 200 million man army on the sixth seal, I think it is, or the sixth trumpet, which is the second wall, and. Uh, you're getting Islam, of course, very much involved with uh, the final war in Revelation chapter 11, which very much talks about the coming of the Antichrist. This website talks about Islam being used by God to basically subdue idolatrous religions such as Catholicism. Um, it has happened, but uh, you know there, there's, there's kind of a lot of things happening. I think Christianity in general is just being targeted. Um, it's a very interesting website as well. Uh, Turkey was very much involved in that first. Uh, you know when the nine pillars of Islam were formed and subdued a lot of the nations around them through Islam and of course Obadan means destroyer and there is uh, at CERN is the place where the destroyer actually had an altar back in about the first century as a link to CERN here with uh, the triple six this, the actual logo is 666 six, six. Um, that's in Switzerland this is just outside Selm the destroyer in the book of Revelation 911 so you can see the great tie between how Satan is using Islam and how he is bringing forth a lot of demons from the abyss and of course the powers that are behind uh, Catholicism and Islam and a lot of other religions are the Masons who have brought forth their plan is to use these religions in order to bring about their Luciferian religion um, again so it's a very hard thing for to get people to understand this uh, if you're a Muslim, I think the best way to 
um, represent your religion as peacefully. Um, I think that's the best way because it is a sin um, to murder even though Muhammad, yes he did murder people, he was known to rape people, he was uh, known to take a child bride. Now if you're getting your morals from Muhammad you can forget it. Muhammad confessed a lot of sin as it's written in the Quran. He confessed he sinned many, many, many different times. Um, and if you're if you're a Muslim and you know that about the Quran and about Muhammad, it's, it's very difficult to deny because you're trying to make your religion look good. But there's no need to do that. Um, biblical Christianity really teaches that we're all sinners and that Jesus Christ was the one who died on the cross for our sin. And that is the ultimate uh, sacrifice the final carnal sacrifice that was made for the sins of mankind, the sins of Israel and it says the Jews would reject him at first but accept him later on so again um, this is talking about the pits of hell many of the angels were bound um, during Noah's day Jesus says, just like the days of Noah shall be like the days of my return, Matthew 24. This may be another video, yes, about the cube and Saturn and the relationship between that and Islam. So all these symbols are being used. Whenever you see a symbol being used for a religion, know that it's breaking God's second commandment. They shall have no idols. This means no symbology no idolatry and and yet in all the religions there's some kind of symbol you know the the moon used in Islam uh, he's, a, he's a Catholic idol which it just amazes me that Catholics still break that second commandment of course he's here's the event last year the little ceremony in Switzerland about the tunnel very satanic transhumanism the bad on ascending so it's very hard to deny all these things are actually happening now which I was shown about in the novel Starstruck over 20 years ago now see how the Hindu religion ties in with this new world order probably one of the fallen angels in Revelation 9 you know that are bound in the river Euphrates so there's, there's four of them one of them is the Antichrist described in the Quran as the, the true Messiah who kills the Antichrist but is more likely to be one of the four fallen angels so uh, it's just what, what really is uh, taking place right now and just great destruction great war all around us because humanity have fallen from grace and they're rejecting the Son of God and this is what happens when you reject the Son of God Satan has all his false religions around everywhere. You can just join it and they're all at war with each other. But Jesus is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. He's overcame the world and by his blood we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Hallelujah. All this demonic stuff is just bringing about Satan's one world religion, one world government. So I'm briefly just going to touch on some of the points here that I have a Christian friend who made this website and uh, just going to look at a few of these points that he's listed here for good doctrine. So I'll leave the link below. The first one is listed here, women have no roles in a church authority over men whatsoever. That was true in the Old Testament as well but there was one judge called Deborah who God anointed and yet she still um, kept herself humble and still kept her place as a woman okay and it's very very important that she that she kept that because when a woman oversteps her bounds uh, she displeases God but she was allowed to take the role of a judge and yet she still kept her estate as a woman and you can read about Deborah in the Old Testament and I think because one of the men esteemed her more than her natural role 
served that the man was punished by God and so you got to very much understand women have no authority over a man whatsoever inside the church or outside the church okay it's very important to understand that I do believe there's enough men in churches that would like to take a responsible role and it's up to the women to support these responsible men in order to serve God that's God's plan the next one sodomy is a sin an abomination to God and definitely not to be embraced by the church so I believe that this could be like the abomination of desolation set up in the right wing of the temple because if you're standing at an altar getting married um, to the right hand side of the woman should be her husband not another woman you see and so I think this is language about I think the abomination of desolation is gay marriage um, again try and do that in a mosque and see what happens see how long your country lasts before it's burned to the ground and the next point the King James Version is the preserved word of God oh yes as I briefly touched on CERN are active now um, and we have a Mandela effect um, which again is prophesied in Daniel 7 the Antichrist comes in and changes times and laws and so uh, just like you know the Antichrist the, the, the beast the false prophet and the dragon there there's four of them which are, are mentioned in the caliphate in the Quran as well and which some Muslims understand certainly Muslims that are saved in Jesus Christ now can understand that that is what the caliphate is talking about and it ties in with Revelation chapter 9 of the four um, fallen angels who are loose to lead the lead the communist uh, stroke Islamic army in the end times just to attack all the nations and possibly fight against Christ that is coming the next point or sorry I will just speak more about the King James Version it is a translation from the original Hebrew Greek and Aramaic um, yes there are some English words that have been changed but uh, the original words have remained the same okay the next point divorce and remarriage is adultery unless previous partner has died well I'll add to this what Jesus said I won't add or take away to God's word but I'll just quote Jesus Christ in this you can read down this here from Mark 10 therefore what God has joined together let no one or no man separate now when I was reading through this earlier I saw a word the uh, a certificate of dismissal never heard the word dismissal in uh, the King James Bible it was always a certificate of di divorce to put her away it said to put her away not to you know but some words have changed around then in the house the disciples asked him again about this matter he said to them whosoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her if she divorces her husband and marries another she commits adultery so if you're a believer and you, and you divorce your spouse and Jesus doesn't really mention any reason what a pastor should come in and say that even if there is uh, one of the spouses have been unfaithful there should still be counselling within a church but there's, there's nothing like that happening these days there's only accusations now so like one spouse can just accuse the other one of something without any evidence and then they don't even go to the church to get a divorce they don't even go to the pastor they just go straight to a lawyer and that's what happens uh, it's, it's very sad today that there's more people being divorced in churches than there is in the rest of the world and that's of course where Islam puts the church to shame the next one here church position pastor, bishop, deacon, elder only for men and must be married and perhaps have children if it's God's will yes well it's just to show responsibility at the home and if you're running a church it just means that you should lead by example that's all the Apostle Paul was saying the Apostle Paul wasn't married uh, there are there were other others in the Bible that the Lord used who weren't married or in fact some of the Apostles were married but they lived as single men because they were going and doing God's work so this is why we need the support within a church um, for families um, who the men are the ones sometimes the women are going and evangelizing now 
which again it's not against God's plan for a woman to go out and evangelize a woman can evangelize and prophesy and preach out in the street if she wants come in and give a testimony in a church but she just can't be a pastor the rapture is post tribulation well we'll briefly look at that um, from Daniel uh, chapter 9 this is the part of the Bible that many people talk about um, you know the rapture happening now if you look at this part here the 70 weeks determined upon thy holy city Jerusalem this is where Jesus was crucified to anoint the most holy perhaps talking about uh, the blood of Jesus on the altar as in the book of Hebrews 9.12 um, to restore build Jerusalem Messiah the Prince Okay. so this is talking about the second temple priest score in two weeks the Messiah shall be cut off but not for himself um, now of course the Messiah's ministry was for three and a half years so this concerns the, the final week <clears throat> so it, it emphasizes this here which part of the 70 weeks it says he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week so this is the length of Jesus ministry it's for seven years <clears throat> And as it says here, in the midst of the week, he's cut off, but not for himself. Not for himself, it's for the sins of Israel and the rest of the world. And he causes the sacrifice and abolition to cease, which Jesus did when he was crucified, because God no longer accepted any other sacrifices ever again. Even if they're to build another temple and try to do sacrifices... God will not accept it. A lot of people are waiting for the third temple to be built, for this to be fulfilled, but this is more of a parable which uh, Jesus gives a little bit of light in Matthew 24 about. You know, when you see the abomination of desolation being set up in the right wing, as we've just discussed in the, in the gay marriage, you know, then basically plan to get away from the cities which are embracing this sin. Otherwise, you're going to miss Jesus coming, and then when he pours out his wrath on the wicked, then you're going to have missed it. So the final one here is, once saved, always saved. Temporal salvation are both lies. And that's absolutely correct. Um, you have to continue with our Lord, even if you, 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 you do succumb to sin, you got to quickly repent quickly just tell whoever it is that uh, if you're involved in any relationships outside of marriage for example you got to quickly repent and say um, you know we shouldn't be doing this it's not God's plan you know but a lot of couples these days stay together you know they, they actually have a relationship I do believe that people should have a relationship before they get married they should have be in agreement about a lot of things because I think the reason why people get divorced so quickly today is because they're getting married too quickly. Speak from experience there. You know, just briefly, this language is talking, I believe, about the um, marriage supper of the Lamb, which is the consummation when Jesus resurrects his church. And, you know, a consummation happens during, or uh, sorry, after. Um, a man and woman get married they, they, they consummate the marriage so this is talking I believe about when the wedding supper of the Lamb now whether that happens in heaven or whether it happens here on earth or wherever it's going to take place um, we know that uh, if we continue with our Lord and keep our garments clean as, as the book of Revelation says you know like it says here you know, in Islam, you're, you're, you're encouraged not to like dogs. It also says in the Bible, you know, a lot of the, without other dogs. It's not talking about yappy little, happy little yappy dogs. It's talking about those who are um, non-Israelites as a dog, okay? If, if you don't, haven't the covenant with Jesus Christ through his blood and realize you have to keep the commandments, Blessed are they who do his commandments that they may have the tree of the tree of life. 
enter in through the gates into the city. So again, this wasn't me that just made this up. This is what the Word of God says in the book of Revelation. You know, you can profit from it or you can say that I'm talking rubbish. It's up to you. Okay, and this is about the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's just talking about, really, they say that the woman is either born again Israel or the church. Take your pick. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints, because they're, they're washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hope you've got something out of this video, and see you in the next video. God bless.